Hello, everyone. Uh, my name is Jerry. Welcome to my talk. And I'm an Android developer based in Taiwan. And today's talk is going to be about Android message capturing view to be map conversion. So uh, in today's talk, uh, it's going to be two parts. The first part is what's message capturing if you don't know the feature well. And the second part is we're, gonna, we're going to show you what's behind the scenes, like how everything works. So. Uh, if you don't know the feature well, just uh, have a look at the video. Um, so in one of your chat rooms, you just long click on any of the messages like this. And then there's the option capture, just click on it, and then you can start selecting all the messages that you wanna capture. Also, you can click on the hide info to uh, hide the sender's information because a little anonymity wouldn't hurt with it. And once you're done, just click on the capture button and then you can see the results, which is a long screenshot of messages. Also, you can uh, capture more than like one long screenshot of messages like this one. So uh, that was our feature here. So uh, how does that work? There's actually three steps to it. The first step is we have to prepare the views. And the second step is, uh, is we have to convert the prepared views to bitmaps. And the third step is that we have to kind of repeat the first two steps. Very simple here. All right, just let me break down the steps for you here. So for first one, prepare views by preparing, we actually mean that we have to uh, make view go through the view drawing process. And there's two uh, two ways to do it. The first way is to, we don't display views, so we just call view.measure and layout ourselves to get uh, the view ready for drawing. And the second one is we can actually display view uh, the views on the screen and let system do the work. So uh, let's just put the two options in code. For the first one, we don't display views. There's actually this function that you have to write first. So in this function, you have to get view uh, from your parent view, whether it is a list view or a recycled view. And the second one is we have to uh, kind of run the measure and layout with the view that was just created by the parent view. But if you take a closer look at this line of code, uh, you realize that we actually pass in two nodes in it. So whenever you call this view, uh, there's no recycling mechanism in place here. So whenever you call it, it actually creates a new view, and then which is could be which could be a problem for our resource. So uh, also you have to consider like uh, destroying the view after. Uh, this process is done. So there's actually a lot of work to it. So we decided to go with the second option, which is which is to uh, display views on the screen. So in order to do that, there's actually, um, it's actually very simple, just one line of code. For example, uh, for this view, you just have to call set selection and just pass in the adapter position to do it. So after that, the view will just be shown on the screen. Very simple. So this is uh, our way of doing that. And uh, that was our first step. Step two, you have to convert the prepared views to bitmaps. So there's actually two things you have to consider here. The first one is memory usage. And the second one is saving and recycling. So what do they mean? For the first one, memory usage, um, we kind of have to do a little memory usage prediction here. We have to do the math here. So in order to do that, we have to get the height and width of each view and multiply them by four bytes. But why four bytes? Because we're using ARGB eight bitmaps here, which means one pixel is stored on four bytes here. Also, we have to uh, factor in the uh, bitmap memory storage because that depends on the Android operating system that the user has. So, cause we, I know that we have like a lot of different users across different countries. So we just want to make sure that our feature doesn't go wrong. So we just introduced the, uh, the approach here, which is, uh, which I call it um, saving and recycling. So what's that, how does that work? So let's just say uh, this is the long screenshot that we have as our results. So for, uh, our first message view, we have to show it and convert that to a bitmap. So we get our first small bitmap, and then it's the same for the second bitmap, second message, and the third one. And then for every like page, uh, we have like a page height limit. So 
until you hit the page height limit, we actually have to combine all the small bitmaps before the height limits into a long bitmap here, like this one. And then um, for now, the long bitmap is actually stored uh, in cache. So before we move on to the next message, we kind of have to you know, store that in on disk in the background before we move on. So it's gonna be like this. We store the bitmap on disk and recycle this one to release the memory that we just used and just go on to the next one. So this is what I call uh, saving and recycle, recycling in order to reduce like memory usage. All right, it's very um, straightforward. So uh, uh, for the third step, um, it's actually uh, just uh, repetition. We have to you know, repeat the first step and the second step. So in this, in step three, we have to consider message pagination. Um, a lot of uh, messaging apps have like this pagination mechanism in place in order to save memory and avoid exception or crashing the app because in one chat room, one user can, can actually have like a lot of like messages. We just don't wanna show all the messages at once. So we divide the messages into pages uh, and show one page at a time. So, uh, and line is no exception. So how does that work for us? Like um, we show one page at a time and every uh, pages have like overlapping messages and we have like auto preloading uh, mechanism before end of each page. So let's just assume this is a page. So page one of messages and uh, in uh, this example, we're just going to say that it has 15 messages just, just like this and then Second point is that pages have overlapping messages in order to create like seamless user experience before uh, between different pages. So second page and first page, they have like overlapping messages. Let's say we have like eight overlapping messages between pages. And the third one is auto preloading. There's an auto preloading threshold before uh, the end of each page. So once you hit the, uh, uh, preloading threshold, we, the chat room, uh, line chat room actually preload the next coming page in the background for you and swap the pages uh, immediately once that's done to create like also seamless user experience for you. So users wouldn't know uh, the page has been changed. So we have the, um, and the uh, threshold is third to last message. So we have the three um, mechanisms in place here for line Android. So, um, uh, so for our feature here, like I said, in first step, we actually have to set selection. So we go from the first um, first message to toward the uh, threshold, preloading threshold. So in order to prevent line Android to prepare the next page in the background for us and swap the pages we actually have to uh, preemptively load the next page before we actually hit the threshold. And uh, we have to recalculate the adapter position for this set selection API before we hit the threshold. So the uh, view can be shown like correctly. So in this step, we have to load the next page preemptively and recalculate the adapter position after that. So in this step, we just have to focus on the two to kind of circumvent the uh, mechanism that Line Android already has. All right, so to uh, wrap up, there's actually three steps to the feature. The first one is we have to prepare views. And in this, in this step, you have to consider view drawing process. And in the second one is we have to convert the prepared views to bitmaps and you have to consider like uh, memory usage and saving and recycling. And in the third step, uh, you have to repeat the first and second steps. And in this step, you have to consider message pagina pagination because a lot of messaging apps have one. So you have to uh, consider that. So um, there's actually three steps to it. So I think after knowing this, everyone can just make their own message capturing uh, feature at home. So uh, that was my presentation. Thank you for listening.